Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. And I'm so, so happy to have all of you on this call today. From wherever you may be joining from, I'm not sure. It's a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, or maybe even good night after you finish the, the webinar. I do really appreciate all of you. I dove my heart and I respect you for coming on this call because um, seeing a flyer like this doesn't mean you, you know, you will feel like logging on it. And so I'm actually curious to know what resonated with you when you saw this flyer. What was it that made you log on? I'm curious to know, just type in the chat, anything. Nothing is wrong, anything. The first answer that comes to you is the right answer. What was it that made you log on? What was it that made you log on? I'm interested to know. Distress, <laughs> Okay, you want to distress or what, what, what exactly? Okay, so that was the word that resonated with you. Okay, let's see. Thank you for responding. I'm getting a lot of feedback. So the purpose of this webinar, it's important for you to know the reason why I came up with this webinar. Anyway, it's on the, it's on the chat, it's on the flyer. Uh, topic, but topic, but marketing was great too. Really, marketing was great. Thank you for that. Uh, even though I didn't put in so much effort, know your reality. Thank you, Marwa. I came back to this, the chat because it's important to get rid of anger. Oh my God, counting coming from you. Not that I ever knew that you came across as somebody that has anger, but that means how many people have the emotions that they don't even know about. Thank you for that. Thank you for being vulnerable. So the purpose of the webinar mainly is to understand how your senses are a gateway and how your mind talks how your two minds talk to each other, how your brain filters information, how your reality, your behavior, and your state are intertwined, and the solution to a desired emotion. So, who is this for? You've already told me the reason why you're here, but who is it actually for? It's for anyone who desires to discover themselves. And you've already said that, and some of you have said that in the chat. It's when you want to, when the, for the people who want to actually unravel their five emotions, five main emotions. It's also for those who want to navigate through their emotions and take control of them instead of allowing their emotions to take control of them. And it's for those who are result oriented, not problem driven, solution oriented, solution driven, and not problem oriented. If you're problem oriented, you're not going to find this interesting. So maybe this is not the time for you to log in, maybe some, some other topic, but not this one. I'm being candid. And if you're curious to explore, but explore what exactly? Explore your inner self. Are you curious to give yourself opportunity, the permission to actually explore who you are deep down? And I saw obviously in the chat, someone, okay. I think you're getting echo. Thank you for telling me. I will log off. Thank you. It's off. I was logging on here to monitor myself. <laughs> Is this you? Somebody said to get rid of anger. Does this sound like you? Any, any other person feels this? You're in, un, unable to manage your anger or anger just keeps cropping up. Do you sort of feel a fear for the future? You have a child on the special with, with special needs. You have a child with autism spectrum. Do you feel fear for the future? Do you feel um, I'm scared of what's going to happen in the future? Do you feel sadness sometimes, you know, sadness about how the, your child's therapy is going or how your, your child actually feels sometimes, that may sadden you. Is this you? Do you feel guilty that you're not being able to take care of your children the way you want? You, are you guilty about your parenting techniques with your special needs child, with your child with autism, and with the other children? Is there some tinge of guilt? Do you feel hurt regarding the way people look at your son from any form of stigma? What do you feel? Any of these emotions resonate with you? You can keep it to yourself for now because it 
takes some juggling the mind to actually understand what is it really because sometimes we do describe one emotion for another so don't worry we'll name it later you'll find a way to name your emotions later before we go on i'd love all of you to rename yourselves with because i've talked so much about emotions now i want you to rename all yourselves with the name you want to feel powerful when you call yourself with like i call i love to to, to call myself, I'm a game changer. Don't copy that, but it's okay, you can copy. It's not on copyright. <laughs> what name do you want to rename yourself with? Um, type it, rename yourself with any name that you want. And that's renaming, not on the chat. Um, yes, thank you, Ria. Perfect. Rename yourself, just go to your name and rename yourself with the name you want to be called as. That's very important. And I'll explain to you why they're remaining at the end. Hopefully I can be able to see your videos. To be candid, I'm not able to see some, some of your portfolios. And, and I think that's a setting. Can you all hear me good? Am I moving on well? Is this something you're enjoying so far? Okay, so what's the way out? Thank you, Sruti. <laughs> what is the way out? Um, the reason why we get entrapped in emotions is because we don't understand the deep root cause of your, you don't understand the deep root cause of your emotions. You don't know how to label the emotions. You label one emotion or the other and that confuses the brain. You don't have a clear roadmap as to um, once you find out the emotion, then what do I do with it? Because emotion is energy emotion. If you leave it inside, it does not leave the body, it gets transformed into another soul. What's the roadmap? Emotion is part of my nature, you say to yourself most times. So you could say something like, well, I'm a sad person, and I'm a depressed person. That means it becomes your identity, which is very difficult to eradicate. So these are some of the reasons. And staying in victim mode, feeling, oh, poor me, and I feel so sad, I feel so down. Once you start using this, you now understand as we come to the, towards the end of the webinar, why um, these would make you to stay in that emotion more often than not. And once you learn about your emotions, you're not able to apply the same roadmap for your child. And so you've grown into this person that can take charge of his or her emotion. But at the same time, you've not applied the same techniques on your child and your child is still having behaviors and it comes back to you that it becomes a vicious cycle. Who am I? A little about me because this webinar is not really about me, it's about your emotions and how we can unravel them. I'll tell you a bit of a short story. So we moved houses about three years ago. Normally when you're moving houses, what do you move? Furniture? What else? Clothes? What else do you move? Who has moved houses here? What were some of the first things that you packed to your new house? I'd love to see something in the chat. And I want to make this as interactive as possible. <laughs> dishes. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm sure you're a kitchen person. You love your dishes. Good. Okay. Thank you, Sruti. Uh, my books. Yes. Me too. TV, clothes. Exactly. I'm sure you didn't pack the things I packed. I packed my baggage of emotions. All my five emotions came with me. But I didn't realize it until we moved houses. A beautiful house. But for some reason, I wasn't happy. And I, I remember I was depressed now on looking back. I had um, poor decision-making skills. I felt very lonely. My parents were in their 70s and 80s. I felt guilty calling them, you know, to tell them I'm feeling low because of my son and everything. I had, I had a lot of support around me, but I felt um, angry about my son's diagnosis, to be honest. I was sad with the way his therapies were going. I was guilty about my parenting style. I was hurt with the way things were going towards him, the way people looked at him. Um, and it was just a dark cocktail of emotions. I moved with. Um, well, to fast forward, I landed up um, on a social media page and I saw a coaching program and I decided to give it a try then. Now I know it was more than a try because I got coached by the program heavily by a mentor holding my hands. I got coached and now I started coaching parents of children with autism and special needs. 
Um, that's enough about me, except for the fact that I've been quite busy writing some books. Uh, I've written um, uh, two books. I've co-authored two books, and Mr. Kauni Shaidi here is one of the co-authors. And that was when we did a lot of work during the pandemic. And um, my, the, my so first solo book, it's finally done. I hope all of you will be there for the launching. It's coming in November. And I have an ebook and so many more in the pipeline. Okay, promise, that's it about me for now. <laughs> so what is actually stopping you from really taking ownership of your emotion instead of your emotion taking your ownership of you? So you have some limiting beliefs, lack of awareness of what the problem is. You don't have clarity. You don't have a coach that can actually hold your hands. You have poor habits of thinking, rethinking, um, catastrophizing, uh, catastrophizing about the future. You have a negative environment around you. Um, you lack a mastermind. You're in victim mode most of the time, and you're thinking that the external environment is causing your pain, whereas it's from within, and we'll see that a bit later. You are problem-oriented. And you remember at the beginning of the session, I said it's for people that are solution-driven. Because if you're looking for problems, problems, you only find problems. And you have fear. So these are some of the things that are actually stopping you from owning your emotion. Which one of these actually feels like you right now? Please type in the chat. It could be one, it could be five, it could be 10, it could be all. Hope not, <laughs> but just be candid because when you start owning these words, now you'll be, you, now you, you bring them out to your conscious and you'll be able to do something with them. So which one of them? One to 10. Okay. Okay, Lord, thank you. Problem oriented. <laughs> I see. Yes, okay problem-oriented. Okay, that's a common one. I need more answers. No coach. Okay, and you're a survivor. <laughs> Negative environment, lack of awareness, fear. So lack of awareness is taking the lead. Thank you for that feedback. So how do we unravel our emotions? Um, are you ready to unravel your emotions? Yes, no, yes, no. Also be candid. It's okay if you're not ready. So I know how slowly to take it. This was a scary topic for me initially because I had fear. So mine was fear actually, because I was wondering what am I going to dig deep and, and find? Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, so if you're really, really ready, let's just dive into it. So our minds are divided into two, not literally, the conscious and your unconscious mind. So the conscious mind is just 5% of your thoughts. Isn't that shocking? I've always thought, well, I'm conscious, so it's like it's taking my, my whole thoughts. And your unconscious mind is a whopping 95% of your thoughts. And um, since it's 95% of your thoughts, which one do you think we should spend more time taking care of and nurturing? Your conscious or your unconscious mind? Which one? Yes, exactly. And that's why we're here today. Okay, I'll just um, allow us to watch something, a short clip. Hopefully it plays, sometimes it does, and I hope it does now. Thank you, your unconscious mind, precisely. Okay. I love to play this. I'm, very, I'm a very visual person, so I like to play. Um, okay. If it doesn't play, I'll just tell you the story behind it. Things happen, and this is where emotions get in check. So three, five years ago, I would have gotten, you know, I would have had fear and anger and all that because it's not playing. But I'd say to myself, what's going to happen if it doesn't play? Nothing. Maybe it's even for the better. Who knows? We'll try for a few seconds and nope, it's not playing. It's not budging. If it plays later and I'll come back to it. So this is a dad that is that has a child, I think, that has, beha that he has behaviors or he has special needs. 
So the dad is really screaming at the child all the time. And this, these are another, this is another family that get hugs when they're leaving the house and they say goodbye. And so you can just imagine what it's like. I would have loved you to really watch the video because it will really make sense. Um, let's try again. No, it's not working. So it's okay. Anyway, do you get the picture? Do you get the two pictures? So this is a dad that has um, kids. Again, I'm saying it because I would have loved you to watch the video and he screams a lot at his children and the children are always screaming at each other while this one on the right is the family that are always hugging and feeling good about themselves so uh, your self-image forms between the ages of zero to seven and these kids that get shouted at, unfortunately there's some self some image that has formed before they were seven years of age and that's why many psychologists and many people, like the wise people, will say, make sure, take care of your kids before, by, by the age of seven. Make sure you do most of the work by the age of seven. And this is not to make you feel terrible because you'll say, oh, well, it's too late for me now. I can't do anything. The good thing about it is there is a way out, but it's always easier because their unconscious mind stores most of its, thought, most of its thoughts before the age of seven. So your unconscious mind is like a garden. If you, uh, if you plant weeds, it will grow weeds. If you plant flowers, it will grow flowers. Whatever you plant, it will grow. It does not reject. It, it doesn't have the ability to reject. It only accepts what you give it. And after the age of seven, now your unconscious mind starts to take over because that's when you start to think analytically. It's your thinking mind. And that's when all the things that have happened in, in, in the past will now start being influenced. Things like your, your parents shouting or somebody giving you a gift or holding something in high esteem all starts from the age of seven because you're now thinking and trying to really understand. But what you're thinking about is all coming from the subconscious. Everything you think about after the age of seven is because is the way you think about it is because of the unconscious mind that was there before the age of seven so our videos didn't play but we're still, still going to move on so i'll run past this because i've sort of uh, explained this oh yeah okay so your unconscious mind like i said is a doer it does things because it already knows what it needs to do because it has taught some memories we'll see that in the later in the later part of the slide and it accepts um, anything you give it. And that's why I said it's very crucial for you to make sure that from the beginning, from the time you have your child, actually from in vitro, uh, for our mothers here, have you heard when, when we're told, um, say good things when you're pregnant because your child can't hear? Anybody heard that? Because I was told that a lot and it's true. That's even prior to zero to, to age zero, that's even from birth. Yes, precisely. That's so common. And it's true because sometimes as, as, as women, you can see what sometimes when you're pregnant, actually, when you're in, in high emotions, the kicks of the baby is different. The men, unfortunately, you will not be able to get this, but we do. That is because their unconscious is already kicking. And so whatever they hear eventually is going to make sense to them when they grow up. So it's able to accept whatever you put in, and it knows why. Eventually, when you do things, your unconscious mind knows, knows exactly why you did it. Your conscious mind, on the other hand, is a thinker. It thinks, but the unconscious mind allows it to do. And your conscious mind can accept and reject, while your unconscious mind can only accept. And your conscious mind asks why, like I said, it's the intelligent mind, it's the thinker, while the unconscious mind is the emotional mind. So it just knows why. Based on your stories and your experiences and your beliefs, it just knows why and it gets things done. Your unconscious mind is related to your body. And so that is why when you keep thinking of things from the, you, you hear things and then you keep thinking about it, it goes into your unconscious mind, it gets it gets impressed uh, in your unconscious mind it gets engraved and then your body takes the effect and because of that your results come out 
based on what your unconscious mind is. Unfortunately, 90, about 97% of people work on the results that's on the physical part of their bodies without really focusing on the unconscious. But remember, the unconscious is actually 97% of your mind, and your mind is in your whole self of the body. So enough of the conscious and unconscious. Is this too technical? Is it too, um, like, am I taking you back to school? Is this something you're enjoying? Or uh, you want me to, to, to make it lighter? You know, we're talking about the mind here. I just wanted to do this before I dive inside what actually happens about your emotions. Too heavy or light? Light or heavy? You can type H or L. Anyone? It's just right. Thank you. Light. Okay. Light. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I tried. Perfect. Thank you. I tried to make it as light as possible, actually. Um, there's so much about the mind, but we don't have to become professors during this webinar. So. Okay, so how do your five senses become a gateway? We take in information from the external environment. It goes into the mind through your visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, or gestatory. That's through your eyes, ears, feeling, or touch. Your nose, your smell, or taste. And then what happens after that? When you take in information, when you, what information is in the external, that what I'm saying now, you can hear it. It's just data, it has no meaning. How many of you love cooking or have seen someone cooking maybe your wives or your mothers or your kids or your, yeah, maybe kids or your sisters or your siblings? Who likes cooking here? Who has bought ingredients actually to cook with it? Let's see, I'm sure many men love to cook here also, not just women. Who likes cooking? Okay, me, Patty, I know. <laughs> I know because you post some things about some of your favorite foods in my degree, I remember. <laughs> I do too. So when you buy your ingredients, they're just there, right? You can buy any ingredients and what you make out of it depends on your skill. So when you buy your ingredients, they're raw, but you can make anything out of them. Is that true? What I make and what you make may not taste the same. Why? We'll see that later. But the important part to note here is that all the data you take in is just like your raw ingredients. They just well, only when they pass into your mind, that's when you can start to do something with them. Okay, I'll explain to you a, sh a small analogy here. I'll also still try to make it light. It's about your conditioning. When you take in data from your five senses, three things happen but they happen on what? Three processes happen on something, on your conditioning. As humans, we all have different conditioning based on our experiences in life, our stories. Remember your unconscious mind. Hold on to your unconscious mind throughout this journey because it's, I'll keep referring to that. And your unconscious mind depends on, as I said, your beliefs. And they come from your six human needs, which is would be your certainty, your high certainty, but so you like things in certain ways. You need to be certain that things are going to happen. You're a high variety person. Your love and significance is high for you. you. You're a person that loves contribution or growth. It could be any of those. And also your story, that's your values or your beliefs, whatever you believe about yourself. And that still came before the age of seven. Probably after, but though most of the things you endured, you, you, you went through before the age of seven, what you heard your parents say, what you heard um, religious leaders say, what you heard other people say, all has an effect on your conditioning and your drive. What is your drive? You always have a driving question. You may ask yourself things like, why do I feel stuck? That's a common question. Well, it was for me. Why do I feel overwhelmed? Why can't I make more money? When am I going to stop feeling like this? That's a driving question. So when you keep having those questions, they, they are part of your conditioning. So your six human needs, your story, and your drive. The process that happens to your conditioning will determine the result. So the first process that happens is deletion. Deletion happens by when, so we, we have about 400 billion bits of information that comes through our brain all the time. Yes, 400 billion. 
it's actually very hard for me to say, but we are only aware of 2000 bits at a time because our brain will delete it based on our conditioning. It will only keep what we need at that point in time. Let me see if I can play this. It will be interesting for you to see this video. My videos are not playing. Oh, okay. It's a feedback. Next time I'll do something better. And another thing that happens is distortion. Um, distortion means it alters it or it falsifies it. So it falsifies it or it distorts it based on what your conditioning is. It takes in the information, all the bits, and then it goes through like your condition, like a cataloging system. And it checks, 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 checks. What does she need at this time? I'm going to distort it and give this to her. Remember, your unconscious mind is an emotional mind. So it gives you exactly what you need. Or it generalizes it. So I've been on this webinar before and I love my webinar. My brain will say, anytime I log on a webinar, I'm going to love the webinar. That's generalization. So um, if I had played this video, we would have gotten a good cross. But it's quite difficult to explain the video, so I'll leave that out. So just to explain, our kids on the autism spectrum can, I, I find it very difficult to delete information. Yes or no? Uh, parents of children on the autism spectrum, like they see the lights coming in, the sounds coming in, the, uh, the cars passing, the humming, somebody cooking, the smell, everything coming through the visual, absolutely precisely so their brain is not able to do the deletion part what of generalization how difficult is it for them to generalize same yeah so you teach them dtt district trial training on a table and you think they've gotten it now you're going to take them out and show them yes very difficult to be um you to show them how it's done elsewhere my son visited me in my office yesterday and <laughs> and uh, he knows how to make his tea at home. His therapist is here, so he can attest to that. Lloyd is, has been his therapist for five years, amazing therapist to my son. Um, so now he's in my office and I said, okay, Abdullah, go make your tea. And he was fumbling. And I said, oh my God, this is a good example of generalization because he's thinking it's a different setting. Um, let me see, I'm going to get all this through. Um, so generalization can be difficult. Also, our kids distort a lot. So you tell, some, tell them something based on their conditioning. They think it means something because maybe somebody has done something in the past that they paired it with aggression. So they distort it. I'll give you more examples about this later. Um, so how do you discover your reality? Your reality will only come after these three processes of deletion, distortion, and generalization and it all happens on your conditioning remember your conditioning your beliefs your stories your values during my session i do take people through uh, my my clients through how they find their values how they find out their negative beliefs their limiting beliefs actually what's stopping them uh, how they understand the language they're using and how all that part is their conditioning and how we can tweak it so your reality is the internal representation. Don't, it's, it's okay, you forget that I said this, but I have to because this is an NLP model. And so I have to do it exactly the way it is, but internal representation is nothing more than your reality. So after the dist deletion, distortion and generalization, on, based on your conditioning, what comes out is not just a 2000 bits of information. It's the molded information based on your conditioning. And that is your reality. So the way you're listening to me now and the way, um, who do we have here? The way Sas is listening to me, Rahima is listening to me, Medina and uh, Lloyd and Ria, you all have different, re uh, different realities of what you see. So at the end of this um, webinar, if I ask everybody for feedback, everybody's going to give me a different feedback. Why? Because your mind deleted, distorted and gener generalized based on your experiences in life, which are, which is your conditioning. And so your reality now forms your state. You either leave this webinar feeling, wow, I've gotten something. Oh, oh, oh what a webinar. Or, oh, oh, I've always known this. It's all, it all has to do. So your reality is what you see, hear, taste, feel after this process has gone. And that um, goes into your, that determines your state. 
and then also determines your physiology. Let's do a small exercise. Can we all stand up, please? With all due respect, if you stand up, it will be amazing. Seriously, you enjoy this and you can even do this yourself. You can actually catch yourself. Let's do something about state. Let's do an exercise about state. Are we all up? Ria, can you check to see who's standing? Because I can barely see anyone. Okay, <laughs> thank you, standing up. Let's stand up, let's take in some deep breath, let's breathe a bit, let's be in a calm mood for now. Okay, everybody up, I'm up, thank you, Didi, thank you. Okay, close your eyes if you may, if, you, if, you, if you're comfortable, but if, you, if they'll give you a better experience. Imagine yourself, I'll do it with you, imagine yourself in a beach with the flowers smelling awesome. You can actually feel the water gushing. It's blue, it's nice. It's just you. You can feel the sand under your feet as you walk. And it's like the world only knows about you. Okay, open your eyes. What did you feel? And how was your state? It's a short exercise, but maybe it took you to where I wanted it to take you. So what did you feel when you went into that state? And what state was that? How did you feel? Relaxed, calm. Hopefully my voice, okay. Hopefully my voice was able to give you that. Okay. What did you all have for dinner today? Lunch, breakfast, calm. Did you want to return? Oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I know. I almost didn't want to also. <laughs> um, what did you have for lunch? Okay, I'm doing that just so that I break your state and we go into another state. Imagine, close your eyes now. I'm going to, we're going to travel again for a bit. I'll make this shorter. <laughs> Imagine you with, um, you're at home and then your son returns and give you a card. Um, please close your eyes and keep standing and I appreciate you standing. Your son comes home and gives you a book and says, that says, your son had so many behaviors today in school and he was even put inside the room for some time because the behaviors escalated and we just didn't know what to do with him. Okay, come back. I don't want you to stay there for too long. <laughs> oh, Winifred, you actually you usually do this. Good, I know, I know because you're an NLP. And Winifred is a, is an NLP colleague, so she knows this process. <laughs> yes, okay, so how did you feel? Yeah, stressed. Oh, when you're in stress, okay. So how did you feel with the second one? Worried, of course. And you, it's just that the video, I, I, I can't see all of you, unfortunately, I think I have a certain problem. Worried, yes. That will determine your state, so your, the reality you form. So obviously when you felt, when, when, when you read that, so you saw something and you visualized it. You, you, you read something and you heard yourself saying something to yourself. That's your auditory. Now it went into your conditioning and said, oh, oh my God, that means my son will always, is always going to have these behaviors. That's a belief. It formed your internal representation, which caused your state. And because of that, even your behavior would change towards people that day. Who knows? Maybe you would even call the poor boy and say, why were you having behaviors today? If he is able to understand cognitively. So your behavior may, you may feel hurt with the way it was related. You may feel, feel sad. You may feel, you may just generally feel down. And the reason why I asked you to stand up is because your state will affect your physiology. The way you feel will determine how you stand. And that's why I'm always standing during my webinars because I, I, th that energy comes because of my state. I'm happy. And so obviously I'd rather be standing than slouching on a chair. Thank you so much. You may take your seat. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for engaging. And your behavior will, just, will determine the result. It will determine whether you're going to reach out to the people or keep saying, oh, that means it's, the school is not going on well. And you may decide to feel happy or sad and that will determine your result, which eventually goes into your mind and starts the process again. And we have to be, be careful of the vicious cycle if we don't break it in the conditioning. 
So this is a picture that is very heavy on my heart. I pray for my dad. He passed in December. And uh, I just want to talk to you about a little of my own conditioning. Three, four, five years ago, I would just board an aircraft and tell my husband, please pay my ticket. I want to go and touch lives in Nigeria. I never understood why. I just kept having this yearning to go and reach out to people. And this is a value I got from my father. May Allah have Rahma on his soul and all the departed. Uh, this is my father sitting in blue gown, um, traditional gown, um, always supporting me. It was all about, he would always ask me, ask me, you've done this seminar, what are you going to do to them? It's, uh, it's like you've given them a taste of the honey and you've taken it away. What, when are you going to help these people? You know, he sat with them, he interacted with them and that's a value. So one of my values is the part of my condition is reaching out to people. Um, the reason why I'll hop on a webinar at any time is because I have this strong need. You remember your six human needs? My, one of my, my highest need is contribution and growth. And that's why I'm always on, on a webinar, I'm always trying to learn and impacting knowledge. So I'm just using this picture for you to see where you can get some of your values from. But you have to just be in tune with your unconscious and understand why you're doing certain things. Whew, that was big. <laughs> is it still light or is it getting heavy? Okay, so enough of the academics. <laughs> And we're going to move on to where I'm going to now. Try to wrap everything up with a bow or a ribbon. Uh, getting heavy, okay, I'm done. So what's the solution to a desired emotion? I'm sure you'll be wondering, yeah, but I know I get it, but she's taking us to all these emotions of sad and happiness. What's next? Um, um, so everything now is coming back. Um, fatty, getting heavy, but unfortunately we are going to put everything back on the screen. But this time I'm just going to run past it because by now you've become gurus in this. Yes? You've understood. I've, I've broken it into little chunks and I, I just saw that I can take you bit by bit and then put the whole picture back again. Is this picture familiar to you from the beginning of the webinar? Good. Thank you, Brain. That's what I wanted to, well, that was what I was hoping to hear. So to get us to find out how we can get to our desired emotion, I'll just use an example. And Lloyd knows this. Uh, he will resonate so much with it. <laughs> so about a month ago, I found out about an amazing protocol and I decided to do it for my son. And because of my need for contribution, I felt I'm going to be the one in charge of this protocol. Even though I have an amazing team to help me, I felt I want to be the one to contribute for my, to my child's well-being. And so I started, there's a part of the protocol that I was doing, I started doing with the therapist Lloyd and the other therapist. But lo and behold, I saw it wasn't going on well and sort of I was wondering, then I said to them one day, why don't we, why don't you do it yourself? And let's see, maybe if you take me out as one of the variables that like, one of the person that is part of it. And now you take me out, let's see what happens. And they both told me that you won't believe it, everything went well. And I said, what, okay, then I don't have to be a part of it. To rewind, about four or five years ago, I would have been very hurt, you know, I would have felt, oh my God, that means I can't even do my son's therapy. So let's see how you can get to a desired emotion. Uh, but let's start with the one I could have done if I didn't know better. So the external event is the fact that my son is on a protocol. So my son sees me and I, I see my son visually, that's visual. I see my son, he's backing away from me and he's shaking his head because he doesn't want me to be part of it. And then I hear him say, no, I don't want, he says this a lot. <laughs> and I take it into my mind and I say, oh, um, so that means he doesn't want me to be part of his therapy. That means I'm not a good mother. I've distorted the information. The internal representation I get is that I'm not a good mother. I'm not trying my best. That means something. And then my state is going to be affected, just like you saw in the exercise we did. My behavior would be I may get unhappy with the therapist and say, well, you're not, you're the one that's not preparing good enough. Even my physiology will change. The result will be that it's going to be a tense environment. 
But instead of that, what did I do? When he said, anytime I'm trying to give him a supplement and he says, no, I don't want. What I do, what because of my belief that I'm trying my best, that's a belief. And I have a value that um, I, I, no matter what, uh, I have a value of growth and contribution. And I also have memories before that, well, before it has worked. So the fact that it doesn't work today does not mean anything. And so my mind will go and run through my cataloging system of my beliefs, values, decisions, memories, and decide to delete the no, because that's my conditioning. That is why your conditioning is crucial. And during my coaching sessions, I delve into conditioning a lot. Without conditioning, there's virtually nothing you can do with emotions. And then my internal representation is that, wow, I know next time I'm going to be able to do it. Anyhow, it's being done, whether it's me or not. And my state will change, my behavior will change, and my result, of course, what do you think? It's going to be an awesome result because anyhow, I'm going to praise him, I'm going to thank the therapist, and I'm off to the office and I'm happy. Anyhow, it's been done. Does this make sense? Does this example give you a bit, some idea of how you can challenge your conditioning based on your stories, your beliefs, your memories? Does it? I want to see yeses. It's okay for you to say no. I can always give you another example. Okay, and thank you. <laughs> and... Um, so you can imagine, even for our children on the autism spectrum, I just realized when I went through this, I said, so even their therapies is dealing with their conditioning. Because when a child has gone through so many years, like my son has gone through so many years of aggression, his conditioning was that when I aggress, they allow me. And so when he sees me, for example, because for a long time I didn't have instructional control over my son. So when he sees me, the first thing he does is to start misbehaving. Because he sees me, he just generalizes, oh, it's still the same person, I can do what I want, based on his conditioning, his memories, because mommy always allows me to do. And the picture he sees is that, well, I've gotten away from it. His state will change, obviously, and he'll be like, happy go lucky without listening to me. Even the behavior will change, sometimes good, sometimes bad. And so even therapies, you can apply this in every environment. To be honest with you, everybody goes through this. But the good thing is that it takes only a few seconds for this to happen. Isn't the brain amazing? It is amazing, right? So what do I work on? I'll just run through this. Apart from emotions, as a coach, I will go through three assessments with you, very unique assessments to find out about your deep conditioning. Uh, you're going to master your emotions, set achievable outcomes. You're going to grow a thick skin to stigma because it's not going to matter to you anymore because your, your conditioning is richer and you're going to be able to make more powerful decisions, communicate with your child with the language he understands. And so much more. I don't want to bore you with all this. You can take a screenshot if it really is, it matters to you. But these are just some of the things I work with parents. So um, what are your concerns? You may be wondering, how do I maintain the emotions when, once I have them like now, after the webinar, what happens? And I'm too overwhelmed to start. I have too much anger. I'm too angry. I'm too sad. Where am I even going to start? I don't know my values, my needs, and I don't even know how to name the emotions. How do I use the same tools for my child? Easy. Because whatever I'm using on me, I'm using on my child. And how do I know I have actually achieved my result? You will know because there's a criteria that I give people. So I have my PCC method, the parent, the child community approach, which is a holistic approach, because I believe there is no way you can help your child if it's just the child. The parent has to be involved, just like you're on this call now, and I do applaud you for that. And the community, the community will involve the therapist. You can see if my son's therapist is here. I miss the child. They usually misbehave when their mothers are around sometimes. Okay, now, Mariam, you can go back and tell the parents. They need to recondition the child, and that is therapy, and that's some, some of the things you're helping them with. Sorry, I wanted to attend to this, this chat. So the parent, the child, the community are an integral part of the child's success. The community will involve him where he goes to buy some, some grocery, how he talks to them, how you see the way they relate. It's so important. 
the doctors, the nurses he sees, his sports coaches, his therapists, his teachers, they are all part of your child's community and they are an integral part of him actually reaching independence. In, uh, well, as independent as possible because some kids may not to the end, but as independent as, as, as they could. So this is a process that I take. And before I came up with this process, I went through and found out how are parents being coached? And these are some of the things I found out. So some focuses only on the child is a one way um, uh, of growth. Mine is holistic and um, it's parent child led. It's a health, there's a healthy relationship with therapists because during my, a lot of the surveys I did, there's so much anger towards therapists and it doesn't have to be like that. There is a program I have for parents and therapists to work together amicably. And um, you have a coach to hold your hands all the time. And I work on all seven areas of your life and your child's life, not just on academics. Like many people will say, well, he doesn't have speech. And I'll say, what else? What, what other parts do you want to work on? So these are just some of the things I work on. And guess what? As a timeline therapist, not just an, as an NLP, I have an added certification of time, timeline therapy where I can actually remove all your emotions. Yes, you heard right. I can actually take out all your emotions and I've done that with myself. And I'm going to keep doing it because some are going to keep coming. We take out the emotions, but we take, don't take out the memories or the events, unless in extreme cases, because the events are there to give us learnings. And these are some of the things I do with my therapist. These are just some of my testimonials. I'm not going to bore you with them. And um, we get into the end, more testimonials. Oops, that was supposed to be a surprise. <laughs> Get your cameras ready. Rhea, have the link ready. I have a soft uh, copy of some gifts that I want to give all of you. And um, I have a gift book that it's, this is very dear to my heart because for so many years I lack clarity. You can start scan the code and get the PDF immediately on your phone and start going through my ebook of Clarity is Power. I do believe that without clarity, you can never get anywhere. This, for sure, I know. Um, so, if you're done with the scan, I'll move, or else Rhea is going to. Rhea has it. Uh, oh, thank you for the feedback. Um, I must read. Thank you so much. I do appreciate this feedback. Um, and your next gift, as I promised. I forgot to tell you that anybody that stays to the end is going to get a gift. I actually just flew through my mind. Um, you have another template, be the cause on your result. So I came up with this template because I realized, ah, thank you, Ria. After the uh, session, she's asked us all these questions. She's gingered us to start thinking about how our condition is. Then what happened? Yes, of course, you can always reach out to me, you know, for to, to start some coaching session. But what if you want to start doing something on your own today? So I came up with this template it's, and it's a template to show you ways. Have you keep scanning, keep scanning as I do. It's just to show you ways on how you can begin to loosen the, the, the edge of the problems when you have a very big problem. And you keep thinking about it without challenging it, it becomes stronger and more engraved in your unconscious. But you, when you start to ask, but is it true? Who said? Questions like that are things I put for you on the template. Uh, thank you, Hafsa, um, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, oh, okay, some parents um, are more difficult to deal with than the children. They make things difficult for the <laughs> parents need to understand what they is doing their best. It's so true, Mariam. See, it's their conditioning. They're only they're, they're, they're only being themselves. You know, they're, 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 all their actions are based on their conditioning. So they're using the resources they have available to them. They don't know. And that's why I love to coach parents because for so many years we've been focused on the children. And I feel it because I had all the resources to take care of my son, but I couldn't because I was not in a good state. I told you I've been going around the place with all my five emotions. I'm a much calmer person now. As a result, all my kids are calmer because they take it up. So I'm doing all this talk so that you can scan the code 
if you're done if not reach out to ria ria you can put your number reach out to me and uh, we'll um, surely send you the code or the link anytime just download it awesome for that feedback angela i'm happy you downloaded and reach out to me if you want to know more and we can get on a discovery coaching call and that's free even though even on that call you get a lot a lot of information remember there i'm sure there were three people that came on this call there were either there's always three people that are in a room when you're discussing there's either a close person and the close person comes in and thinks yeah she's seen something but no uh, i'm not comfortable with this that's a close person an arrested person is somebody that comes in he's a bit uncomfortable but he wants to learn he's going to give it a try an open person is the way i've seen most of you on this call if not all you're open to everything that's going to come and that's why i said rename yourself because i'm interested to see how open are you to the possibilities of you feeling different so which one are you which one are you on this call and that's a rhetorical question so if you're an open person you're actually going to reach out and say well i want more information and when we do get on the discovery call if you are an open person you would really really enjoy the coaching session because you start to loosen out your challenges and your bottlenecks of course um okay no, so thanks for the nlp training detail for the professional organ oh thank you so much didi i really do appreciate this and didi i think you've done something about nlp yeah so <laughs> yeah nlp training i try not to make it nlp actually i'm trying to use like really um some other terms okay this is all i have for you today and i really do want to thank you for your time and your interest and uh, for logging on from wherever you're logging so that's about it for tonight anybody wants to say something open their camera say something so nlp is neurolinguistic programming it's the way we think about things and the language we use either in in ourselves or the language you use to talk about the thoughts that go into our minds, if you remember the model. Okay. Anybody wants to add it to? <laughs> Thank you for logging on. And what time is it now? You're muted. <laughs> oh, now I can see everybody. I'm so happy. Yeah, yeah, Uma. Salam alaikum. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How Hi, are you? Session. Thank you. I have a friend. I'm actually here for my friend. I'm going to relay everything to her as soon as the session is over. I give her a copy of your book without permission. <laughs> so, it's, it's for everyone. I want everybody yeah. to have it. Everybody yeah. should have clarity, actually. Yeah, it's about it's I'm right yeah. now. So it's good time for me. Thank you, Saida. Thank you for And I am multitasking, actually. I have another Zoom session. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about it privately. Sure. <laughs> I am in class right now and I am here because I, I just have to be here. Okay, so I just have to be here. I like it. That's a belief. That's a belief, by the way, but it's good. <laughs> it's a value, you know? You needed to be there because you're satisfying a need of yours. We all do things for a reason. Yeah. So and I, and ah. Yes, you are an amazing coach. So I just like, of course, I do not have a kid on the spectrum, but mm. I always something to learn. Like every time I'm here, sometimes I'm hiding, I'm behind my mm -hmm. camera, you don't see me, but I'm there. You all the today. Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for coming. Doctor, is this you, survivor? But she is, isn't she? Um, on another call, I'm going to invite Doctor, and you'll see the reason why she's actually a survivor. <laughs> um, yes, <doctor. laughs> you want to ask something or say something, anything? I just wanted to say this is an amazing um, session and I really learned a lot and I need to get on those discovery calls. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let's get just, those emotions I, through the window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, But being, I being a spy, you can understand how much I juggle. So it's really, really, um, and then the time I difference. Does. I, I just know. checked recovery um, calendarly appointments and it's from 12 a.m. my time to 4.30 a.m. my time. <laughs> so. Really? Okay. Yeah, that's true. True, yeah. Because you're, we are 11 hours ahead, yeah? 
Yes, yes. Um, I had one behind. I don't even. <laughs> Today is Thursday. Okay. We could always, I... we could always do something. We will yes. find a way. Yes. We'll find a way out. You know, we'll always yes. find a way out. Yeah. Uh, yes. Winifred, thank you so much, Survivor, Doctor Ramatu. She is a survivor. <laughs> Winifred wants to say something. Thank you, Halima. Thank you, uh, Winifred. Yes, please go ahead. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this webinar. Honestly, I just came back from work. I noticed it's already time. I have to mm -hmm. rush and connect. Mm -hmm. And do you know one thing? When you get the the exercise we did, watch walking by the beach. Imagine, you know, I usually do that when I'm stressed, but I don't know. But only thing I noticed that after doing that, I feel calm, I feel happy, but I don't really know how much it impacted on me. If not that you discuss it, I really appreciate it. Oh, and yeah, I hope you can so still make out more words like the way we can communicate with parents, yeah. with autism parents. Many a times they are more anxious than the kids, honestly. Yeah. And they will fail to notice when the child is making wonderful progress for the fact they are looking out for something else in the child, who mm. the child may not be able to give them at that moment. Yeah. So I think if you can make us something in order for them to have hope and be more positive in life in thinking, it yeah. also help them to carry on in the journey. Precisely, precisely. I really believe that. I, I really agree, Winifred. And you know, it's still about the conditioning, to be honest with you. It's all about, you know, I, I can't overemphasize this. Ria is my secretary. She knows she's named with brave today because she is aspiring to be a brave woman, which I know she has in her. But she knows I'm always talking about conditioning. You know, even whatever happens, I'm telling her, see, it's all about what's going on in your mind. Uh, so like I said, the poor parents are not doing it for, you know, um, you know, they're, they're, they're not doing it to hurt anyone. Um, like I said, we are all a product of our circumstances. Whatever happened during our childhood or whatever we picked up from, from the age of seven, that's everything we're using to make our, to form our opinions and then take actions on them. It's so true. Yes, I will come up with something, Winifred, and uh, do let me know what else can help, help parents because I would really love to help them. Because I was once in their space, so I feel them. Thank you so much for that feedback. Thank you so much. I Fortune, appreciate you to, Yeah, I appreciate too. Uh, Fortune, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, everyone. Also, uh, thank you and hello to everyone. I'm actually multitasking, I'm doing painting, but thank you so much for such an amazing, amazing session. I really learned a lot. Uh, my question is, I am working with kids on the, on the spectrum as a behavioral therapist hmm. here in Dubai. And uh, so I have been in a situation or situations where parents do not really understand the protocols that we use here to work, or there are some things that are not very clear about how therapy works. Mm. So I've been talking to my director, if we can use something like a seminar or a training session for parents where they can have somebody face-to-face -face, uh, just um, teaching or training them. So I don't know if you are in Dubai. Are you that somebody that we can approach for coaching? Are you available? Uh, can we work with you somehow? Or can you give reference? It's something that we'd love to also implement at our workplaces. Yeah, very interesting. I love it. I love the way you're not just focusing on the children, but you're also thinking about the parents because like I said, it's a team. And yeah. that is the child's part, the community part of the child. Yes, I am in Dubai. I reside in Dubai. I've been here for 10 years. And yes, I do coach parents and also now some therapists that are going through so much. And uh, yes, we can connect. We can connect. Okay, well, can I get in touch with you? Email address um, Yeah, you can. Rio, do you want to drop my uh, work number on the chat, please? For anybody yeah. else who wants to contact me. And also my email, please, Ria. Thank that you. will be so appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank that you. Be my fortune. Thank you. Maria, thank you for coming. Your, your picture just popped up. All my colleague coaches are here. When you're talking in front of coaches, you're like, um, I hope I'm like, yeah, I hope they're getting it because they are, we are virtually like been doing the same thing. Maria, thank you for coming. Do you want to say something? It's been a while. 
I need my, to appreciate my pleasure, all the my pleasure. Actually, I missed a good part of it. Okay. Uh, but I, I just wanted to know techniques of, you know, distracting uh, people because uh, my husband is a stroke patient, okay? Yes. And sometimes he's irrational, okay? Mm -hmm. You can't just uh, uh, speak to him, you know? So anyway, I'll connect with you, Asma. Okay, sure. maybe you can. <laughs> sure, of course. Some ideas. Of course we, can we can do something, and 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 I, and I and I keep saying this that whatever he's doing, he's doing it with all positive intention. Everything he's doing is with positive intention. If you start from that and understand that he's just trying to communicate in the best way he can. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm patient, sure. And yeah. I pray that God gives you more strength. Thank because you, I know you've you. been on this for so many years. Thank you. It's very difficult. I know it's difficult, but yeah. it's good we see them. And even our children on the autism spectrum, yeah. right? Like my son hits me and I'm thinking, what? I'm yeah. thinking, well, he's trying to tell you something. So the same with all due respect. I'm not comparing your son to kids on the spectrum, but it's just that he is doing the best he can with the resources he has available. Yeah. For him. Please, I would actually love to connect with you, Maria, even yeah. over coffee, like real time. You know, sure, it's you, sure. right? We've been on this for so long. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Asma. You're, welcome, You're amazing Maria. too. You're amazing too. <laughs> thank you, Maria. <laughs> thank you very much. Anybody else wants to say something? Um, I just want you know to know that. Um, there's just something I want to leave you with, that the difference between an ordinary and an extraordinary person is in mastering your emotions. Which one do you want to be? It's time for you to take control of your emotions because it leads you to either success or the other way, which I don't really want to go there. Kaunin, please go ahead. Sorry, your hand has been raised. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Coach Asma. I must uh, congratulate you for a great session. Thank you. And very insightful. And I believe that uh, uh, your expertise would be definitely helpful for uh, those uh, parents who have such uh, challenging uh, children. So with your experience, I'm sure uh, you are going to create wonderful solutions. So I just wanted to ask one of my known uh, friend. Uh, there's a child, they call it, uh, she has some PTSD sort of things. Okay. So yeah. uh, I would, uh, is it okay to connect with you oh. so that you can have discussion and take it forward? Please, yes. I'd love to connect with the parents. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll just do a disclaimer that um, I work with the parents and yes, she has PTSD, that's post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, um, probably it's a condition, sometimes I'm not very, I'm a bit wary with labels, but yes, I can work with the parents and so work on their inner selves and so that we can understand how they can relate to them. Because yes, most times you have kids that go through therapies, but the kids, they, they still don't do well because the parent state is not supporting their results. Yes, please, Kaunin, do go ahead. And you have all my numbers, so please feel free to connect. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to respect everybody's time and log off right away. Dr. Dirishra, did you want to say something? <laughs> I this just joined. I'm so sorry. I'm late to join because I had no two back to back meetings. I just finished that. I've been hopping from one Zoom call to another. So okay. I'm so sorry, but I didn't want to miss it. So I came anyway. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Yes, she is a busy woman. I know. <laughs> busy doing good things, actually. So many coaches here. I'm so happy. No wonder that state was good. The energy was amazing. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. I said 45 minutes to an hour, and I need to respect. I have to respect everybody's time. Thank you so much, Ria. Thank you so much for holding the space for me, and we'll connect soon, all of you.